hello guys welcome again to this channel and uh, in case you are new here kindly subscribe to our channel like the video and share it as well so today i'm gonna delve into fact or reasons or, or some the things that william ruto should do if he survives the wrath of the gen z's if his tactics will outdo them because these guys are not the going back they are not holding back so there is a time when william ruto became president um, after he appointed his cabinet i saw that he will never work because the, of the kind of cabinet that he has the cabinet is useless so what i would say is uh, if he survives he should uh, look for people who are competent enough to work as ministers or as CSS, as whatever you call them. He should look for people who are competent. Like in the Ministry of Education, you can put in the Ministry of Education someone like uh, Kitura Kindik, not Machogo. Machogo is a former DO who should be working maybe in the Ministry of internal affairs or even defense uh, if you look at uh, all the ministers that this guy has like for the roads for the roads you don't need to put there a lawyer who doesn't understand even how much a bag of cement goes for Murkomen should not be minister for roads for sure for roads you need to put there someone who is, he knows whatever is it is road building we need a, that is competent that's what we call competence root of for him to survive if he survives what he should do he should uh, do away with his uh, boys the young boys they are younger than him but it's very unfortunate that they are his advisors people like osoro are very small babies you see Kimani Chungwa is just a kid. These are the advisors of well, the president, for heaven's sake. You can understand why his, his government is the most useless government you have ever had in this country. He should do away with the Chungwas, the Osoros, the Didimas, Barazas, the KJ, Kiarie, the comedian KJ. He should do away with these people like uh, uh, Molo MP, uh, Kimani Korea, he should do away with this kind of people. They should not be his advisors. He should look for older people who can, who have experience in leadership and they can advise him. Ruto should, if should he survive the wrath of the agencies, he should focus on, he should listen to the people. He should not be arrogant like his advisors. He should try to listen and weigh and see how he can solve any issue that arises. He should uh, not be arrogant and uh, like it is him. Everything is all about him. He should stop that. Ruto should uh, make sure that uh, tribal politics is gone. Because this current, uh, uh, the generation of 60s now, they are getting fast out. The current generation, they are on gadgets. They are on mobile phones. They are on, they are very informed. Uh, and uh, unlike the older generation who are still into tribal politics, it is very unfortunate uh, for Ruto. Because if he, be, he will be basing on tribal politics, that generation is almost going out. It's being fast out. The current generation is the of these millennials is non-tribal. It's becoming non-tribal because of what they are seeing or, or what is going on. Because they have also seen, they have studied and seen that politicians use tribe and churches to fool the citizens. And that's why they do whatever they like. Whether citizens cry or not, these people will have their way because they know they will go back as a tribal goons and or in the church and they will still be elected so that we are getting past there ruto should try to avoid that and also what ruto should do he should tell his people if he win if he survives the wrath of the youth he should tell people like uh, 
Sudi, Murukomen, Didmas, because I had Didmas bought up, I don't know, a private jet or a helicopter. He should tell them not to show off whatever they are doing. Because you cannot be earning a salary of 700,000 Kenyan shillings and you bought a chopper of 200 million. This cannot work. Uh, Ruto, if he wants to survive as a president of Kenya, he should also cut on government expenditure. You cannot use a plane, a private jet to the United States using uh, two million dollars. It is not good. And you are saying that, and uh, how much, you, you, if you can sit down and think, how much ca schools can two million dollars refurbish? How much schools could two billion, uh, two million dollars, that is 200 million Kenya shillings that they he used to as a private jet to the United States. How much, uh, how many schools would it have built or would it have refurbished? How many kids would have been educated using this money? You see, we need to get facts right. The arrogance of spending uh, taxpayers' money and overtaxing them, it will not work, Mr. Ruto. You, if you survive, please even don't go outside of the country again. Focus on working for the people. And you can only focus on working for the people if you surround yourself with the correct people in your cabinet. And also in parliament, you need to do changes. And you don't need to show us that you are controlling the parliament or like you bought the people. Make sure that everything that you bring on the table is for the future and for the people. Um, if Ruto survives this wrath, he should know that now using the church is zero. Because the older people, they are born in the 1980s and, be, and uh, back then, these people... The young ones are telling them, we will not allow politics in our churches. We will not allow politics in the funerals. We will not allow politics in the mosques. And so it is going to be very hard for these guys to use those platforms, including Yoruto, to uh, brainwash our people so that you can continue being elected and continue stealing from them. It is going to be very hard. Uh, if William Ruto survives, he should cut the expenditure of the first ladies and I don't know the prime cabinet secretary ladies. Which kind of offices are those? You understand? These people should be home. They are not being elected, you know. So this money should be sent to hospitals, to schools, to build up schools, to do all, a lot of community things for the benefit of our people cannot allocate 1 billion or 10 billion for an office that is not even in the constitution. So William Ruto, if you are listening, make sure you follow these steps. This is my only advice for you because uh, it is very tough for you. If you are very arrogant, you cannot rule the way you are supposed to because you have surrounded yourself with useless people, useless MPs. If Ruto is to survive, he should try to fight corruption. But I don't know which people elected this guy because um, this guy is the most corrupt and they knew it that he was the most corrupt. So what led the people to elect this kind of leader? Do you think he can fight corruption? I don't, I don't think so. But it's, I advise him to try and uh, fight corruption. Another thing that the president should do is that uh, he should, he's far, he's uh, making our education to be useless now. He should find someone and put him in the Minister of Education who is competent enough to know what we need. And the money should be allocated to build those JSS schools. Uh, the money should be allocated for this transition from uh, 844 to CBC. It is not yet there. It, they, nothing is happening with this government since they took over. There's no transition. Now the parents have been overburdened by the CBC burden, of which uh, the government has not done much, but the parents, they are being sent, they are told, do this, do this, do this. That one is not going to work. You are uh, uh, making sure that our education system is going down in pieces, of which is not correct. Please, if you survive the Gen Zs, try and fix that, Mr. President. And also, 
I have some advice to the people before I go. The people, uh, you know, the president was elected and uh, the people who elected this guy, they went to the polls with different thinkings on their heads. Some were thinking that they are voting to remove the dynasty. Some were thinking that they are voting to send Baba to Bondo. Some were thinking that by voting they would have punished Uhuru very badly. But at the end of the day, we all, we just spoiled the future of this country by electing in a, a president in an ignorant manner. You understand? So, if we will have any other chance to vote, use your brain during voting. Do not use your emotions. Make sure that you elect a leader who can transform this country. Uh, I'm not against Ruto, but he is the one who wants us to be against him by not getting the correct people to work for this country because he has the power but you cannot tell me you choose people who are useless to be in the cabinet to be executing policies that uh, the, the money are allocated for no i don't think this guy is ready to work and the only thing i can say is that ruto must go because he is a young president who could have worked for the people, but he has decided to be arrogant, to be a killer, and to be to just destroy the country completely to make everyone poor. That is what Ruto stands for. I don't know. I, I don't think he can change. Even my advice cannot help him in any way. So what I think is that he must go. It's better for us not even to have a leader. The country should be because now it's like we don't have a leader we are on our own so the only thing is that he should go thank you so much